didn't know he was with them for that, at least I don't know that much. how long he was with them for, but cool. So Trouble, yeah, can't really go wrong with Trouble. All right, so I'm opinion. on my number three. Number three, ah, oh, this was an easy one for me. Again, this I was in college this year, so this is all college oh. discoveries. This is another one, my roommate John. What's up, John? John actually still watches my videos and comments. He's a cool guy. I'm John. still friends with my roommate from college, John Cotter. Oh, cool. He's a friend of mine on he, everything my label puts out, everything Ultimatum's put out, since, since the very first demo he's purchased. So you guys were friend, you guys met in college. We met in college. He ended up becoming my my roommate, and I stayed roommates with him for uh, shared an apartment for two years. Oh, cool. But we were friends um, before that. We had the apartment even. So yeah, see this period we're talking eighty seven. I was actually in college in New York too. You were in New Jersey or New York? New York, upstate New York, in Rochester. So I was in Cortland. Yeah. I didn't realize we were both there at the same time. Yeah, I was up. We were up there. And so I was, we were real close by to each other. <laughs> so him and I, all we did was, I mean, when we when we weren't doing classes or at home doing our artwork for classes, we were on the road looking for record stores. Awesome. Always in record stores. Wouldn't it be a trip if we ran into each other back then? We just didn't know it. We might have. You never know, man. We were always in record stores. <laughs> Anyhow, he he got this little EP. Um, we found that it was. Um, it had two bands on it, Black and White Cover and Sanctuary was one of the bands that was on the EP. Um, Where and, Dane. Oh my gosh, man. When I heard Battle Angels, it was just like, boom, jaw hits the floor. It was just so freaking heavy. Uh, and then those vocals were just otherworldly. Of course, we just recently lost World Dane. He passed yes. away. Just last um, year, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Sanctuary is the second album um, and a live EP. They never really did another album that sounded quite like this one. Um, this was it was produced by Dave Mustaine. I didn't know that. Yep, it was produced by Dave Mustaine, who I also think is the one who convinced them to record their cover of White Rabbit, which is uh, Jefferson Airplane. Ah, interesting. Yeah, Dave was always good about picking oddball covers. Yeah, um, but they actually did have a full album recorded before Dave came on board, which has recently been re-released. It was it's called I can't remember what it's called now. I have it, but it's just it's got a new updated cover. For, and it's, it's all the original songs that they read. I guess they're probably demos more than anything else. Oh, it's, a, it's prior to this? It's prior to this. Okay. And it's got a lot of the same songs. There's a few songs that they dropped and they never recorded on the album. No, they, they just had two main albums, right? Two. Well, and what was the one after this called? Uh, Into the Mirror Black. Thank you, like Into that? the Mirror Black. Okay. And then they had the EP, Into the Mirror Black Live. Oh, which okay. was actually, the EP was actually only released to the radio stations. It was never even officially released to oh, the public. Like but the it was Molly Hatchet Live one? Yeah, but it was only on CD. And huh. It's been bootlegged, but it still hasn't been officially released. Thank God. Released. I mean, sometimes it's like, thank God for bootleggers, Dad. Because <laughs> think about the stuff you wouldn't have gotten a chance to hear. Yep. I mean, if it was only up to the artists and the record companies, and for me, it's like, I'm sorry, but that's just not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear that weirdo stuff. I want to hear it when you sucked. Yeah. I want to hear the human element, you know, before you get so good. That's definitely true with me and like a band like Aerosmith. I was always looking yeah. for the bootlegs because that, I don't know, any I'm getting off the subject. It's cool. But anyhow, this is not thrash. Um, some people might call it so. It was just more like a power. Metal again, it was, thing it was before. To, to me, it was like Judas Priest on speed. Um, your, your son's playing. Music. Yeah, I think. Like, I think <laughs> so much for telling him that we're making a video. Please be quiet. <laughs> so if you hear any extra bass lines going on, that's my kid. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, yeah, the whole album is just so great. It, it, it like again with the Overkill, this could have been easily in my top. You know, anywhere in my top five. Yeah. I always liked the cover art. I've, I heard rumors, and I don't think it's true that they were arguing with Sanctuary Church in California, which is Bob Eman's church. Because of the um, name? The name and the logo, yeah. Huh. They both had Sanctuary. They had similar kind of and logos. So this would be like a cutting They both had the, you know, the swords in their logos. And, I yeah, because what was Sanctuary Church? The Rock and Roll Refuge? Refuge denied. Uh -huh. And, of course, the preacher kind of looks like, an, uh, like a demonic Bob Beeman. Uh, back in the day when Bob, you know, had that long hair and no beard. Why is he, like, shooting the book, eh? Because he's breaking the rules. Oh. Yeah, a little bit bitter cover. Sort of bitter. Something. I don't know. It, it came it, from it something. Be, it could be true. <laughs> I don't know. And I, the thing is, I love Pastor Bob. He's a good friend of mine. He's just one of the greatest guys you'd ever want to meet. So, uh, regardless if that's true or not. I never heard that story. So, so I, mean, I never was really into these yeah. guys. I know he went on to form Nevermore. Yep. Never really listened to them, although I did see them live on Gigantor. And, and then they came back when Nevermore broke up and they reformed Sanctuary with the original members, most of the original members, recorded another album, and then that's, you know, he did his solo album and then he passed away on Sanctuary. Oh, I didn't know they Sanctuary did a third album. Yeah, they have a third album out, which is fantastic, but it doesn't sound like this. Okay. They never did another album that sounded quite like this. Awesome. 
Good stuff. You're up. You're on number oh, uh, man. Uh, two. Talk about two. Two. another one that this was on both our lists as well. All time favorite metal albums. I mean, and I was late getting into this one, but now I mean, I love this band. This is their fourth album. Uh, I love their first two. The third one was a little bit weak because there's more yes. of that. Again, it was a like pushing, pushing a band. In. I personally like it because I like their sound, um, but and I didn't mind a little more commercial. But I'm glad they didn't stay there. Sabotage, Hall of the Mountain King is so yep. so freaking good. Oh my god, they are back with a vengeance, and I think they've they've got one one change in members. I think I think John. John Middleton was not the original bass player. I think you're correct. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm positive. But the rest of it, it's solid, man. Uh, Steve Wackles on drums, Chris Oliva on guitar, and John Oliva on vocals. They, this is some of the best material they had ever done. To me, this is their peak album. And to me, this is a blueprint of what Power Metal became. <sighs> it is so damn good. Yep. So damn good. And there's not a song in here I don't like. I love every friggin' song on here. It was kind of dark too. It, it yep. really had it, especially after releasing the was the album that came before that more fight for the, the rock. It just had it Which, was it was more aggressive and it was just darker. Yes, it was, and it's almost like it was like backlash, kind of like Raven with the Mad EP. Yes, I think they knew that the record company was kind of trying to drill them somewhere where they didn't want to be drilled, and they just came back with a vengeance, man. It's kick ass. I mean. I don't even have to list the songs, because if you want to check it out, check out the whole thing. It's a great album as a whole, and... And MTV was playing, at least during the metal portions, were playing that uh, the Hall of Mountain King video, remember that thing? Yep. Yep. It's kind of corny, but I liked it. It's, it's yeah, time. and they're, you know, Prelude to Madness is basically they're taking uh, Edward Griggs' uh, Pure Gint, Hall of the Mountain King, and Chris Oliver is translating into heavy metal, and it goes into their track of the same name. But oh my god, what a great album this is! Yep. If you like Sabotage at all and you haven't heard this one, check it out. If you like heavy metal at all and you haven't heard yes. this, there's something you. I put this yeah. up there with all of the, of the classic Priest stuff, with all of the classic Accept, all that. This is a killer album. Sabotage was always a little different to me. They okay. just had a certain quality that, I don't know, I love those guys. All right, we're still on number two. Yes, this You're is number my number two, two yeah. and then we'll get to our number ones. Um, Very excited about my number one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is my number two. This was, I can say, not now. I was totally into an '87, although I had heard it because again, I had a roommate who bought everything, uh, and he bought this and loved it. But I love it now. This is the third album from Creator, German thrash metal. Again, whereas we talked about Voivod refining their sound, now. Where the first two albums were very noisy and raw and had that kind of fast, it was all about speed and that you know, punk ethic. Here it's, it's refined. And it's this is album number three, three, mm -hmm. and then they also had the, an EP, the Flag of Hate EP, came okay. out as well. But this yeah. is the first one I remember seeing because I remember the cover, the pink guy. Yeah, and then and this he got a name. Uh, I don't know. He probably does. I can't remember it. Let's call him Dwayne for argument's sake. Dwayne, yeah, so there's Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. Here he is, too, in the back, looking rather. Dazzling. That's where he said, give me your, give me your, your, <laughs> your boots, your sunglasses, and your motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> he just came and wiped someone out and took his, his, uh, his, like, Terminator style. This album, you know, I don't know if you guys remember, but Anthrax recently released an album, For All Kings, and that this has that kind of similar vibe. Oh, okay. But anyhow, regardless of that, so heavy, so raw, so fast, and... I'm going to say this, the opening track, Blind Faith, has got to be one of the greatest thrash songs ever. Um, if I was to list my favorite creator songs, it would definitely be in the top five. It's just a great song. There's not a bad song on this one, frankly. Uh, They're every German, song right? Here. German, part of the German, the big three of German metal, you know, with... Um, Sodom, Destruction, Creator. Yep. And I would add Tankard and Accuser to that list, but that's just me. <laughs> Alright, so it's the big five. Yep. But anyhow, <laughs> uh, again... I can remember people actually calling this band death metal back in the day because they were. It was very different from the American thrash metal bands. It was more. It was definitely rawer. It kind of had that edge like a venom. You know what I yep. mean? Yep. Um, you, you could say new world, new wave or British heavy metal and you put venom and raven together, and that's kind of the difference between you know the American thrash and the German thrash. It was just that know, makes sense. Yeah, it was just different. Every every time you talk about this stuff that I've never heard, it always makes me want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, I'm not. 
I'm not a huge fan of thrash, but it's cool when I hear Scott's opinion of it, and I know, you know, I trust your taste and everything. It just makes you want to just go check it out just for the hell of it. Yeah. And Mile, is, he's got the Megadeth kind of snarl to his voice, um, and they got, I've seen them live. They command a room, and it's, I, I love it. <laughs> Every time I've seen them, I've just been in awe. He's just, he's, he is like a Dave Mustaine where when he's on stage, he commands He's got, the stage. He's got big it doesn't matter who else is behind him, and although it does, obviously, but when he's on the stage, you're just fixated on that guy. Yeah, and he, uh, he owns the he room. He owns the room, And that's yeah. what you want to see. That's what you love about... Yep. You want to see guys up there that aren't afraid of a crowd, you know? Anyhow, yeah, great album, Terrible Certainty, German Thrash. If you're into any sort of thrash and you haven't heard this album, do yourself a disservice. All right. Number one for me. Here, you want this one? Sure. Um, this is a band I didn't get into and probably until, God, 15 years after the fact. The Same years came out. 1987. I don't know how I missed out, but I did. Yeah, <laughs> early 2000s. I mean, but, and granted, they they didn't hit huge because their first couple albums were uh, independently released. Pentagram, Day of Reckoning. Uh, original cover right here, which was on Dutch East India Trading. This is on Peaceville. Wait a minute. Actually, it was on Flame Records. Dutch East India must have been the uh, uh, distributor. Yeah. This Peaceville one didn't come out until '93. So, um, totally different cover. Obviously, there's kind of like a mausoleum going on here, which I totally prefer. And then we got what's looked what looks like a kind of a Venom knockoff with the the Baphomet on the front and the gold coloring against the black. I, I definitely prefer this cover. Way way more interesting to look at. But Seven album, seven song album, just, just kind of like just above EP length. Great, great cuts on here. Uh, Evil Seed was one of the first. Evil Seed and Relentless were the first two Pentagram songs I ever heard, and I fell in love with both of them. Uh, and that's when I started, you know, getting this stuff. And now, now I know all the guys, and I, I love these guys. And Bobby, here you go. This shout out to you. This one's my number one for 1987, man. So, uh, the title track's killer. Uh, one of my favorites on here is Burning Savior, which is probably the, their most sinister sounding track. But to me, it's like Pentagram's version of Megalomania by Sabbath. Uh, such an epic, epic track going on. Didn't uh, Place of Skulls do a cover of Evil Seed? Well, Victor wrote Evil Seed. They did cover that. It was a live, it was on the live um, CD that they put out, and then it was the B side of the fall single. That's right. Uh, Place of Skulls has also covered Wartime. I believe they've done Broken Bows too, because those are Victor's kind of Victor's songs. Um, great stuff. If you liked uh, Relentless or the self-titled Pentagram that came first, you'll like this just as much. The vinyl has a different mix. The original vinyl has a different mix and a drum track as the later than the later Peaceville one. Uh, Stuart Rose was the drummer on here. Another R.I.P. Joe Hasselvander rejoined the band later, came back, redid all the drums uh, before they put it out again on um, Peaceville. Peaceville. And there's actually the track running is different from the original version to the Peaceville one, too. It's a different sound. I love them both personally. I'm sure the band has their um, uh, preferences, but again, Pentagram's a band you can't go wrong with. And Victor is just a, a riff, riff master, oh, man. man. He's got Victor's a sound very freaking awesome. I mean, a He's lot of people the, accuse him of being like a Tony Iommi ripoff, but I don't really think he is. I no, definite influence, but Victor Victor has got one of the thickest guitar tones I've ever heard in my life. I mean, you just, when his riffs come in on like a Place of Skulls album, your woofers are like, they're swelling <laughs> along with it. It's like, damn. Great stuff. I mean, if you haven't heard Pentagram, check them out. All right, and this is my number one. This album dominated my world that year. Yep. I was, like I said, from the East Coast. This band was huge on the East Coast long before this album came out. Yep. But when it did come out, this they pushed this band to a whole other level. Whole another Anthrax. Threat. Anthrax. Yeah. This I is, remember uh, getting Among the uh, Living. I Am The Law EP before this came out, and I totally dug that tune. <laughs> they kind of added a, almost a hardcore element to this sound yep. because the first two albums were definitely speed metal thrash yep. they had, but here they added a something to it 
Yeah, Scotty uh, and... Uh, but they were also doing the SOD thing around yep. the same time. That's right. You can definitely hear that influence in this album. Yeah. And I mean, Scott, Scott Ian's love for the punk and hardcore bands was definitely starting to bleed into it. Bleed into it, yeah. And also rap. Yep. Uh, although it, you don't hear any of that on this album. but No, not quite yet. But they started doing that thing. They did the uh, I'm the Man around that time. Well, I'm the, actually, I'm the Man was a B-side. Right. Was the B-side to uh, I'm on the Law. law. Yep, yep, that's exactly. right. And, and that's where that's where it kind of blossomed from there. And they, you, then after that, you started seeing them wearing the rap shirts. Yeah. And, anyhow. and I mean, it was a, it was the goofy rap. It was like Jazzy DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Pinch kind of rap, you know, yeah. <laughs> way back then. Run DMC and, <laughs> yep. and the, uh, what was that? The Fat Boys. Fat Boys. Public and, Enemy. Public, and then Public Enemy came around around that time too. Yeah. Actually, they did. Yeah, that was in '89, I believe. They did a cover, of "Bring the Noise," "Bring the Noise," Enemy. but they did. They had later. an EP with another hip hop rap, UTFO. UTFO. Yeah. Yeah. So they actually they went a step further. I mean, Aerosmith did the Run DMC collaboration. Anthrax kind of did their own version in the thrash camp. Yep. And it's not a bad song on here. And then most of these songs, they still play them live. Yep. And this is basically their master of puppets, or I mean, this is. Which is funny because or their or their rain in, or their rain and blood yeah. or, you know this was this was this is what got them into being the big four yeah all those bands had one that one album that brought them into that I mean for me it was spreading the disease that's when I me too with Anthrax I, I found I, I was they were local so I, I bought their right. very first seven inch single but um, when this came out I was just like whoa and the <laughs> East Coast thrash con compared to the West Coast thrash. They're two different animals too. Yeah, they were for sure. Although Metallica were a huge influence on Anthrax. Oh yeah. Because they were actually friends, and it was it was um, Anthrax who kind of gave Metallica a place to stay and all that kind of stuff when they're out in New York trying to record. They were both album. on the same label. They, they were, were both on the same label. Force. Yep. Zazula. Zazula. Yep. John and Marsha. Number one, Anthrax. Among the Living. Among the Living, which is a uh, nod to uh, Randall Flagg from the Stephen King's The Stand. Correctly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there you go. 1987. We got through it. Yes, sir. Are and we going to break this one up, you think? We'll probably have to break this one up. I'm sure it's at least an hour long. Two? At least two. So that's it. Appreciate you watching. Than usual, but yeah. Please do comment. Uh, we always appreciate your comments. Oh, thanks. Shirts. Pentagram. The, uh, this is actually the limited edition Day of Reckoning t-shirt that came out way later. This was done on like 2015, I think, maybe. What do you got? I'm actually just wearing a, a tour shirt. We recently saw these guys with Judas Priest, Black Star Riders. So, um, any, any, I'll definitely leave comments. I know there's a lot of stuff we left out. Oh yeah, but a lot of, it was on our list, I can guarantee the you. Stuff, <laughs> the stuff that we cut, there was just, there was too damn much and it was too split between us. I mean, I, the stuff that I suggested pretty much all stayed. The stuff that Scott brought to it, it was just like, there was so, there was like, probably another two thirds worth that was just his stuff. Just, it was just too much. We couldn't so. do it. There you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment, like, check out Randy's channel. I will leave a link below. Um, Stone Groove Records. Stone Groove Records. And that's and we're, it. Uh, we're going to go hop in Hot Tub Time Machine and travel back to 1977. Mm -hmm. Next. Hot tubs. God bless. Stay strong.